The whirlwind heritage village in Sophia was a sea of activities earlier today. The vendors and others were busy arriving with their wares, erecting tents and setting up their food display containers and checking on family and friends and scones in this heritage village. In the main cultural center, the recently refurbished building reeked of newness. The Dalibana leaves were neatly woven and decorators were at their tasks. We caught up with some of the vendors. Helen Thomas is from Maruka Northwest District. She brought cassava bread and indigenous beverages of potato wine. I would be selling um, cassava biscuit, cassava bread, and some of the potato wine and paiwari. All right. What is a cassava biscuit? Is it different? Is it a, you bake? No, but well, you bake it big and you bake it much bigger than this normal size that you're seeing here, and okay. then we clamp them out, bring them to a smaller size. In My sister so, um, supply the supermarket with them. My sister Marjorie. Nearby, we found Hermina Andres from Morocco baking cassava bread. She's making the dried ones and a soft type for sale. The dried one is priced at $500 and the soft at $600. How long it would take to bake one cake? You would love it. No, more than 15 minutes, especially the thick one. Yes, because you have to soak on the pan properly baked. Next to her, we found Stella Hendricks of Region 5 preparing the Toma pot of cassava water and meat. I prepare in Laba, Bashkau. Only those two. Only those mm -hmm. two. But what, ca what, else, what other meats can you put in it? You can put any kind of meat you, you want to prepare in the pot. Charlotte Dick of Marakubai has just arrived with her grandchildren and were unpacking her stuff. She had small calabash bowls to serve her drinks. And I have paiwari in the cooler here and fly. Which, which, which one is the, the paiwari? This one here is the paiwari. And, and the, fly the fly is this one here. Guy Garcia from Kaichur was holding fort for a friend. We should be uh, selling some um, wild meat um, prepared in indigenous style. That's with the karakura sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be served with um, cassava bread. Uh, we should have laba and um, the wild hog, wild cow, and uh, some more domesticated uh, products like um, pig, mm -hmm. pork I should say. Right. And um, we'll be also selling um, high marrow. Oh, wow. Yes, and some of it would be roasted. We are expecting to, to sell in, um, all kind of roasts of the meat and wild meat, right. especially wild meat and Armenian dishes mm -hmm. and drinks too. Jose James makes an annual visit from Venezuela for Heritage Month. Most of the vendors said that to ferry their materials and sale items to Sapphire could be difficult. I am expecting, hoping to get sell out whatever that we um, brought here today. Mm -hmm. yeah. How difficult was it getting from Maruka to Georgetown with oh, all the stuff you bring? It sale? was, yeah, it was difficult. You have to spend a lot of money mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. traveling, moving from on the boat. Catching the car. It's very difficult. Do you always make back the money that you spend like, um, to, get a, to get the cassava, to bake the cassava, to bring all the meal here and stuff? Do you make, make back the kind of money? You're not really making, but like I, I must say that it's a fun for me. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's more yeah, getting, yes. the lady was saying that every time she comes, she meets new people, new friends. friends. Is it the same thing for you? Yeah, new friends, new things. Rosalind Stanton is a craft producer from Leguan. She too has been setting up shop annually in Heritage Village. What we have is the Amerindian outfit, costume, the accessories, the headdress, everything that comes from the outfit are from the Amerindian wear. Tibisiri or the bamboo used to make beads, so it's natural material, just the Tibisiri that comes from the Ite tree. Yes, or normal bamboo, just for decoration, or normal beads that you would get in the wild, just used for decorations. And they were happy with the new and refurbished look of the village, which they said would encourage more people to visit and be comfortable. First of all, I must thank Mr. Granger. The, for, the last year when we come here, we find the place very dirty. The pan, we, we just call it the canal. That here it was so, I must say, awful. Mm -hmm. And when I reach here that afternoon, my skin grow for see the place like a paradise. Mm -hmm. And that's the way to clean. The, that's the way to keep the place. And I must thank him for that. As far as when we think, it was like deteriorated. Like people used to jump in funny box and stuff like that. But now it be more much better this year. You now as we see and looking more beautiful now. I enjoy coming out to Heritage. All right. 
Yes, meeting friends, making new friends every time that you come out. I love to meet people. A new bridge seemed sturdier, a newly erected fence was a major plus. Since most of them said that they have relatives in the village, they were generally happy, but said that the sleeping arrangements are sometimes cramped. They had already slung their hammocks in the huts. Additionally, one would be able to get certain authentic Amerindian craft and sculpture, as well as balata figurines and kasrip at the village. The festivities would run for one week. Reporting for Prime News, Julia Johnson.